So hello, this is just another uh, demonstration about um, the XPU. Of course, there are uh, some um, um, situations in CG rendering, uh, for example, in architecture rendering, where um, it's yeah often um, a really hard topic to deal with. So um, a lot of render engines, as well as RIS um, in the past, um, had very, very long render times when it comes to indoor rendering. And um, I faced this issue and problem myself last year um, when I uh, built a room for um, lighting w through windows and the render time was really insane. So XPU um, eventually in the future can deal with that, but also the current version um, except the uh, GPU limit is quite good. So um, this is a basic example, uh, yeah, a room uh, 10 meters long or so with a camera and one direct distant light. I already um, set up the, um, the light itself. Um, the room itself has only diffuse uh, shader and here's the demonstration ball and I will start the render process now. So I will start with XPU. I have also a terminal um, script running to show me the current um, usage um, of the race. What you see is all real time. So I can go here and maybe change the lighting of the light color. As you can see, it really finds up the image quite fast. It's all in USD space. So this is not OBJ, this is all USD space. And of course I can also uh, yeah, try to change the lighting a, a bit. So let us say this one, oh, this looks quite nice. Maybe this, th this looks better. So, and uh, I have also set up different materials. So this is a basic green diffuse material and I will um, change the parameters of the material now. So the first thing that I do, I will apply displacement. So as you can see, it has almost no impact to, because it's just a sphere. It has this uh, 4K uh, height map has no impact on the RAM usage. And I can maybe change some of the parameters like um, some specular shading, maybe lesser roughness. So we see the light bounce also um, in the room from the sphere, more green in the room. I will also activate uh, exponential path trace subsurface scattering now. You see, you get a lot more noise, that's true. But it's still rendering quite fast. I mean, yeah, th 10 seconds or so, and you can already decide how you want to light the shot. So, um, yeah, uh, I will dial down the displacement a bit, maybe this. Yeah, very, very fine. So, and of course, um, yeah, you can also use this value, which also um, gives some fireflies. This also happens when you use the glass material. Um, so when I go up this refraction, you see you get um, Caustics. Um, the caustics will render it right now. And of course you get some fireflies when you turn up the reflection gain. Those are fireflies that can be resolved, of course, in denoising later on. But it's really, really fast. I mean, this is only a 260 RTX and we have displacement um, as well as caustics. So yeah, XPU is unbiased and has, of course, no um, form of uh, anti-aliasing in, in the sample process or refining in some sort. So 
you have to sample it down or you denoise the result. But the, you can denoise the result perfectly with Intel Denoiser. Um, Intel Denoiser um, is working very, very well with XPU. So let us change the shader to a more complex shader. So we um, might change the shader now. So I will go here and use the concrete clover material from Substance Source. So you see we have almost no increase, no big increase in the G GPU RAM usage. So the uh, algorithm for um, dealing with textures is quite clever. So those are, um, this is the um, clever material metallic shader, the base color. Of course, we have to change this to, I guess, back at the time it was uh, uh, exported as RGB texture. And I will plug the displacement now into the shader. So simple, nothing special. Okay, this is too much. 10% is the correct value for substance. It's a data layer. So, yeah, I mean, we can go into the material. Okay, we have, of course, we can dial or activate um, subsurface scattering. Okay, it's not needed on that material. But yeah, I mean, it's really fast also for something like to be inside a room. So maybe we can go a lot closer. Hmm, why is it not moving? What the heck? <laughs> maybe. Ah, okay. That's the right handle. Oh, oops. So and here we have it. So in my experience, this is this is really fast for uh, inside lighting. So I mean, I really like that. And as you can uh, as you can see, um, the RAM usage is yeah, it's. It's heavy for the lighting, but textures um, in USD space have not that heavy impact. You have to, to use a lot of textures in order to uh, come to the um, six gigabyte or to the RAM limit of your specific card. So and now, yeah, it's, it's very well it, it looks very very well so we can activate the where is it we can activate the oh where is it where is the gallery okay that's the gallery so let this render for a couple of seconds so back at the time with with risks on my uh, CPU, which is from 2014, still, um, I was not able to de to do something like that. In such a short period of time, I um, back when I had this indoor lighting scene uh, back last year, I needed to wait almost 12 hours for a full HD render. <laughs> 